Hello and welcome to the MyGrow YouTube channel. My name is Shane and I'm the founder of MyGrow. In this video, we're gonna look at what are the optimum conditions for your grow room to get the best growth and maximum yield. So plants, of course, need adequate water and nutrients to grow healthily, but photosynthesis, which is the driver of the plant growth, will be largely determined by the amount of light the plant receives, the amount of CO2 the plant receives, and also the temperature uh, of the environment, which will determine the rate that the photosynthesis occurs. The data and the references that we're using in this guide are taken from a university study published in 2008 by uh, scientists Sum and Chandra, which are laboratory studies carried out on a high potency strain of cannabis sativa, where they looked at the influence of different temperatures uh, light intensity levels in par and CO2 levels and the effect on plant growth. So let's look at each of these in turn. So first we look at the level of light intensity that the plant is receiving and when we're talking about uh, photosynthesis of course we're going to be talking about light in terms of the horticultural uh, reference which is par, photosynthetically active radiation. And at power levels up to 1500 micromoles per meter squared per second, you get increased growth rates. However, it's also shown that once you get past around 700 or 800 micromoles per meter squared per second, the rate of growth that you get is not really worth the amount of extra light energy that you're having to input into the plant. So it's generally accepted that around 700 or 800 micromoles per meter squared per second is the best trade-off between getting maximum growth and not having to use too much energy to get that growth and all the heat and everything else that um, comes with it. Of course, in the, this is for the flowering stage. Uh, in the vegging stage, you would aim to get about 50% of those levels. So somewhere in the region of about 300, 350 micromoles per meter square per second. You can achieve this by getting your light fixture, uh, reducing the, the output from your light fixture using a dimmer. If you're using a number of fixtures by halving the number of fixtures you're using, or by just raising it about one and a half to two times higher than its optimum hanging height. And this will reduce the intensity directly underneath the light and um, reduce the light intensity for the vegging stage. The optimum temperature for plant growth was tested at two different light levels, a sort of a medium, medium um, power intensity level of 500 micromoles per second, and then a, a very high level of 1000 micromoles per second. In both instances, uh, the maximum plant growth rate occurred at 30 degrees Celsius and fall off, falls off quite significantly whether you're five degrees above or below this temperature. Of course, all different strains are gonna have, have different requirements and needs in terms of temperature. Our suggestion would be that a, a safe uh, band of temperature to operate in would be between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius. And you should get optimum growth and minimize the risk of stressing your plants through uh, too high a temperature. Finally, we look at the impact of different levels of CO2 on plant growth. You can see the Normal atmospheric level of CO2 is about 370 parts per million. This would be air that you'd be taking into your grow room from the external environment, i.e. fresh air. If you are replacing that fresh air regularly, uh, the general guidance for um, circulating air around your grow room would be about 60 changes per hour. And if you're achieving this, it's highly likely that you're, you're maintaining that atmospheric level of CO2 in your grow room. Difficulty with using this system, so drawing fresh air in and expelling it out into the atmosphere, is it's very hard to increase the CO2 level because if you, if you um, in, input more CO2 into the grow area, it's only gonna get drawn out just as quickly and so it's almost impossible to artificially raise CO2 levels. There are a couple of ways of doing it. You can enclose the environment so that the air recirculates back into the grow room or is recirculated around the grow room. And you use a CO2 sensor 
and some form of uh, adding CO2, some technology such as uh, CO2 bags or burners or uh, CO2 tanks. And you can use this to artificially elevate the CO2 level in your grow room. Another method you could use uh, is to use effectively natural and free sources. So we all expel out CO2 when we're breathing and therefore in occupied buildings the CO2 level is often raised as much as twice uh, the, the level of, from the uh, external atmosphere. Uh, this would be normal. And so if you can take air into your grow room from an occupied building, so a house or a workplace, uh, you will most likely be um, bringing in elevated levels of CO2 into your grow room, which will increase the growth rate. So I hope you have got some useful information out of this guide. Uh, if you have any questions or queries, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, please subscribe and take care.